Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 1986 Resim. This time, the voting is San Francisco versus Miami. September 28th, 1986, 1 p.m. kickoff. The original score was San Francisco 31, Miami 16. The noise you hear in the background is our color commentator for the night, John M. We're going to try something a little different this week. John's going to watch the game on YouTube and add his two cents in, if he has two cents. And um, originally, just a little background on this game. The Miami Dolphins are 1-2. and two. <clears throat> They have not had any games change their course yet. Same with the 49ers, they're 2-1. and one. Joe Montana is out injured, and it's still believed that his career is over at this point. So this will be Jeff Kemp versus Dan Marino. And we are going to advance to the game now, and we'll talk more after about what how you can vote for Week 5's Game of the Week. Is that you watching? Okay. I'll put the good. <laughs> once this um, DeAndre Hopkins screen clears, we're gonna or, or once these load screen clear, we're gonna go uh, in a character. <clears throat> John Madden and Pat Summerall. <laughs> Press R1 when between tacklers to get skinny. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Miami Orange Bowl. As we have tonight, today for you, a rematch of Super Bowl 19. Yes, two years ago, these two teams met in Palo Alto at Stanford Stadium, and Joe Montana was magnificent, beating the Miami Dolphins 38-16. Joe Montana's not with us today. He's injured. His career might possibly be over. Jeff Kemp, the son of legendary Buffalo Bills quarterback Jack Kemp, gets his third start of the season as the 2-1-1 49ers come to Miami, the Orange Bowl, to take on the 1-2 Miami Dolphins. Let's head down to the field. Here's a look at the 49ers huddle. Don Shula sending Fouad Reves out for the kickoff. It is 75 degrees and sunny here in South Beach. Marino warming up. John, what do you think the keys to the game are today? Yes, he set an NFL record in 1984 with over 5,000 yards passing. Dolphins came close to getting the Super Bowl again last year before losing to the New England Patriots in the AFC title. Derek Crawford will return this kick. As the fans are getting pumped. Yeah, the 49ers need to come up with some kind of long-term plan if Montana cannot return. Reves with a kick. And Crawford takes it in the end zone. He's going to bring it out. He's to the 15, out to the 20. He's going to get to the 25 before he is brought down. And Jeff Kemp will lead the 49er offense out. We saw Kemp a couple weeks ago against the Los Angeles Rams. Lead them down the field early for an early touchdown. But the fifth-year player out of Dartmouth could not get the win in the long run. The killer bees of the Miami Dolphins. That defensive line led by Bob Brumhauer and linebacker Bob Budzinski. They're going to be tested today with Roger Craig and Tom Rathman in the backfield for the 49ers. Kemp starts in the shotgun. He is going to hand off to Craig. Craig is going to get a first down. Those high knees churning for the 49ers. There's a nice big hole opened up by that 49er offensive line anchored by right guard Randy Cross. Roger Craig, the uh, third-year player out of Nebraska, along with Tom Rathman, the other Cornhusker in the backfield. It's very rare to have two guys from the same college in the backfield together. Kemp is going to throw. It's a high pass, but it is brought down. It is complete to number 85, Mike Wilson, looking at the 49er offensive line. 
<clears throat> as we said, Tom Rathman and Roger Craig in the backfield with Russ Francis, the tight end, Jerry Rice and Dwight Clark are the receivers. Kemp's going to come under center for the second and eight in the 44. Throws it to Tom Raffin. The big fullback is going to pick up about four yards. Looking at the Miami defensive line, Bob Bumhauer, leader of the Killer Bees. Mark Brown and Bob Brzezinski, the other Killer Bees on the linebackers, along with Brown and Blackwood in the defensive backfield. Dolphins have... Dolphins have been to two Super Bowls in the last five years, coming away with losses in 1982 and 1984. Kemp, back to pass. Throws it is caught. This is Russ Francis. Russ Francis competed at WrestleMania II earlier this year in the Battle Royal, along with William the Refrigerator Perry and other NFL stars. Of course, Andre the Giant, Andre the Giant in the end winning the Battle Royal. Russ Francis did not last long. He'll stick to his NFL job. First and 10, Kemp gonna hand off to Roger Craig and in the backfield, he is gonna be dropped for a loss by big number 51, Mark Brown. That right, was Joe Cribbs on the run as they brought Cribbs off the Backfield, the former Buffalo Bill come off the bench to get a ball carry and gets nothing. Cribs again on the carry. He is going to be close to a first down. Bob Brown again on the tackle. Mark Brown, sorry. The other Brown, Bud Brown, also went on the tackle. You got the Marx brothers on offense and the Brown brothers on defense. And this Miami Dolphin. Yep. That's what the New York Jets did last week. They kept running the ball with Freeman McNeil. And there is a flag on the field as Roger Craig picked up the first down. John Frank being called on the penalty. <clears throat> Those are drive killers. You get a penalty like that when you're running, especially on third down and one. Now, for some reason, it's still saying third and one. Must have been further downfield where the penalty occurred. Well, here we go, third and one. Kemp under center. He's going to hand it off to Craig, and it is going to be close. I don't know from the naked eye what they're going to call. Fourth down. Ray Wershing is going to come on the field to attempt the field goal. Wershing, the 13-year veteran out of California. No, oh, no, they're going to punt. Actually, they've decided to bring on Max Reniger as he is going to punt. And into the 15-yard line where my, me and Dan Marino will take over. As Dan Marino comes onto the field, we look at that tremendous season he had in 1984. Throwing for over 5,000 yards. And over and around 40 touchdowns. <clears throat> At Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Eagles have gone up 10 0 as Ron Jaworski hits John Spagnola on a 15 yard pass over the Los Angeles Rams. Marino in the shotgun. This is going to be hands off, hand off to Lorenzo Hampton. He is going to spin and is going to pick up about four or five yards. Lorenzo Hampton, the first year runner out of the University of Florida. 
Now, now try to wear down that 49er defensive line. Second and three, Marino back to pass. Ronnie Watts coming on a safety blitz. He's picked up. Marino hits Mark Duper on the sideline. And they're going to call it a catch. First down, 25 yards for the, one of the Marks brothers in that single bar helmet. Face mask. Toe taps and gets the ball down, and Don Shula looks pleased. With a minute three to go, Miami has the ball at the 45 yard line. Marino comes up into the shotgun. He's gonna go back to pass. Lorenzo Hanton, he is gonna catch the ball and get about five yards before he tumbles out of bounds. In RFK Stadium, the Washington Redskins tie up. No, they don't. They miss the extra point. George Rogers on a 24-yard run. Seattle leads the Redskins 7-6. Kurt Warner scored on a 2-yard run for the Seahawks. Marino, there's a give to Hampton. Hampton is going to pick up the first down. Gets it down to the 42. And with 20 seconds to go in the first quarter, that looks to be... The last play. Miami went all last week scoreless against the Jets, only picking up three points. You can see that game in the playlist. Real quick, as we come to the end of the first quarter, we oh, the Dolphins are going to run the line of scrimmage. They're going to try to get a playoff. Three, two, one. That's the end of the first. We'd like to thank our sponsor on the PlayStation 4, I Teach History 78, the creator of these rosters. For Madden 16, 17, and 18. He's got the 1987 rosters out. Special thanks to our sponsor. Miami 0, San Francisco 0. At Cleveland Stadium. At Cleveland Stadium, Detroit and Cleveland also. And the first scoreless. <clears throat> we turn around now. Yeah. Neither, neither team seems to have a momentum at this point. Marino's got time in the pocket. He's going deep toward the end zone. They're going to say incomplete. It looked like Don Griffin came down with the interception. But at the end, it was incomplete. But Marino, Marino was looking for Jim Jensen, the former college quarterback at the University of Boston, a terrier. At River, well, they are going to challenge. They're going to say that Jensen cut. It looks like he only has got one foot down to me. Quick, quick score update from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. The Bears all over the Bengals, 21-0. Walter Payton catches a two-yard pass to McMahon. McMahon also runs one in and throws a 53-yard bomb to Willie Galt. They're going to say the ruling on the field stands. It is an incomplete pass. This is magical use of instant replay in 1986, or a year before it was even uh, allowed. Does not work for the Dolphins. The Minnesota Vikings all over the Green Bay Packers, 28-7. to Mark Lewis just catches a four-yard pass from Vince Ferragamo, though, for the Packers' first score. Vince Ferragamo, the former Super Bowl quarterback with the Los Angeles Rams, now making his home in Green Bay. Here we have a second and ten from the 42. Marino in the shotgun. Empty backfield. He's going to run it. That is unusual. 
It's not going to work. As is Fred Quinlan. Nope, that's offensive guy. Jim Fonhorst, number 55, is able to get the sack. And knock Marino down for two yard loss. It looked to be a planned run for Marino. Not exactly the type of offense we're used to seeing out of Miami. Third down and 12 now. Yes, he evidently does. Marino's got some time. He throws. And, oh, they're going to say that the ball was caught and fumbled and then picked up by Ricky Ellison. And the 49ers have the ball. They're going to say Mark Clayton came down with a reception. No. I don't know if... I don't know if Clayton caught that pass, to be honest with you. That hit from Ronnie Lott, devastating Ronnie Lott-style hit, come right away. So far, no challenge. No review. Jeff Kemp back under center. <clears throat> Can Jeff Kemp lead the 49ers to a Super Bowl? They are going to review this. It is a booth review. Actually, I think you might see Clayton's knee was down. No, nope, maybe not. At the Houston Astrodome, the Oilers just get on the board as Ernest Gibbons catches a 35-yard pass from Warren Moon, and they lead the Steelers 10-3. Wow, they are going to say that was a catch and fumble, 49er ball. Yeah. Forty Niners come to the line of scrimmage. It's first and ten at the thirty. Kemp is going to hand it off to Roger Craig. There's a big hole, and Kemp, well, Craig is going to get a first down and eleven yards on the carry. That running style of Roger Craig's with the high knees pumping makes it hard to tackle him. From the shotgun, Kemp back to pass. He's going to throw, overthrows his man, incomplete. From Rich Stadium in Buffalo, Stephen Page catches a 26-yard pass from Todd Blackledge, and the Kansas City Chiefs have taken a 10-7 lead on the Buffalo Bills in the second quarter. Kemp back to pass. He's got some time, throws it to Craig. Craig is going to pick up about four yards. Jeff Kemp so far today, four of five for 20 yards. That's Craig's first reception. Yes, indeed, the Miami Dolphins had it locked down on the secondary. Their offense is still missing. They have not since the... Huge outbursts in week one and two have not been able to score. Kemp in the shotgun, third down and six. He's going to throw it deep, and it is overthrown. He was looking for it. Piers Russ Francis, and it will bring on a fourth down, and Max Runniger will have to come on to punt the ball away. That, you have to believe, Joe Montana might have been able to hit that pass. Runniger at the 30, will punt, gets a high punt off, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 22. <clears throat> In case you're wondering, the 49er backup today is Mike Morosky, the seventh year player out of the University of California, Davis. 
As we switch sides again, there's one more score to bring you. Mark Bavaro catching a 19-yard pass from Phil Sims. The Giants are rolling up 17-10. Or no, they're trailing 17-10 to the New Orleans Saints at this point. Marino in the shotgun, first and 10 at the 22. He's going to hand, no, it's a fake. Marino's going to roll and throw across the middle. He's got Jim Jensen, and it is going to be a first down. Three and a half to go in this first half. The little Jim, Jim Jensen, the 6'4 receiver out of the University of Boston. In his fifth year, first round draft pick, or sorry, 11th round draft pick in 1981. Marino in the shotgun. There's the handoff to Hampton. Hampton breaks one tackle, gets another, gets out to the 50 before being brought down by Ronnie Lott. Second down and four. Marino in the shotgun. And he overthrows his intended target. As number 50, Ricky Ellison, who recovered the fumble earlier, was on coverage of Lorenzo Hampton. Third down and four now. Oh, Marino overthrows his receiver and it'll be fourth down as neither Marino nor Kemp seem to be on target this afternoon. Reggie Roby will punt from the 50. Heading toward the sideline. It is going to go out of bounds at the 18-yard line, and that's where Kemp and the 49ers will take over. Well, we have yet to see Jerry Rice or Dwight Clark come down with a reception. So far, it's been mostly Roger Craig and a little bit of Russ Francis. Kemp is going to go under center. He's got Craig in the backfield behind him. He's going to give it to Craig. Craig is going to churn up the middle, and he's going to pick up eight yards, ten yards, nine yards, sorry. Second down and one. <clears throat> Second down and one from the 28. <laughs> and that's the two minute warning here in Miami. Scoreless between the 49ers and Dolphins. Kemp gives the instructions. Big play here. 49ers still have all three of their timeouts. Kemp is going to fake the handoff to Rathman. He's going to throw it. Russ Francis coming down on reception, and he gets out of bounds. First down, 49ers. Let's go. 
First and ten, Kemp in the shotgun. Back to pass, pump fakes to the left. Coming across the middle. Underneath, as he checks down. That was number 85, Mike Wilson. On the reception, good for five yards. And the clock is ticking as the 49ers spend time in the huddle. They're taking an awful lot of time. An awful lot of time in this huddle. 49ers with no hurry up at, at their exposure. Kent back to pass. Good pocket. He's going to throw it. And there is no 49er in range. Way under throws his man. Dwight Clark Dwight Clark was the closest 49er to the receiver. Paul Lankford had the coverage for the Dolphins. Third down and five now for Kemp. Kemp over the middle. It is complete to number 86. And the 49ers are going to go in a hurry up offense. John Frank on the reception. Kemp in the shotgun. He's back to pass. Throws it deep. It is caught by number 82. I don't have an 82 on my roster. Let's see. That was Carl Monroe. Carl Monroe on the reception. I've got him listed as 83. We'll have to get that fixed. The third year receiver out of Utah. Pick it up the first down and Dolphin territory. Kent back to pass. Throws it. Roger Craig on the reception. He's going to get another first down. And the 49ers are going to use their first timeout. They're down to the 26 yard line. Just noticed on the sideline as George Bill Walsh was going over to game plan. It looks like he's growing a mustache. Never seen that before on Bill Walsh. <laughs> Beautiful, sunny, 75 degree weather here in South Beach, Miami, Florida. The site of Super Bowl 28 in two years. Who knows, we might have the 49ers down here for that one. 23, Super Bowl 23 in two years in 88. My apologies. Kemp in the shotgun. He's going to pass. Throws it to the flat to Roger Craig, and Craig is going to get no gain on the reception. Nope. Again, that was Joe Cribbs, the former Buffalo Bill, on the reception. Cribs, a second round draft pick in 1980 by the Bills, came to San Francisco this year when Greg Bell and Rob Riddick took over the running duties from Cribs. Cribs now backing up Roger Craig. Kemp gonna throw. Throws. It is gonna be first and goal as Russ Francis comes up big on the reception. The Philadelphia Eagles are pounding the Los Angeles Rams 27-0 as Ron Jaworski hits Kenny Jackson from 27 yards and Paul McFadden hits the extra point and the Eagles lead 27-0 over the Rams. Meanwhile, Steve Cox hits a 57-yard field goal to give the Redskins a 9-7 lead over the Seahawks. At the half in Detroit and Cleveland, the Lions and Browns are tied at 7. Eric Hippel hitting Leonard Thompson on a three-yard pass for the Detroit Lions. First and goal, Kemp brings the Dolphins up, or the 49ers up to the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> Kemp back to pass. He's got some time. He steps up. He throws into the end zone. It is caught, and they're going to say touchdown to Mike Wilson. 
The 49ers get on the board first. As Mike. Mike will. Oh. Did he have both feet down? And right now the 49ers are congratulating the. The fifth year receiver out of Washington State. And they're going to line up Ray Wershing to kick the extra point. They're not going to review it. Wershing's point after is good. Nine plays, 72 yards. Take a minute 26 off the clock. And the 49ers lead 7 to nothing. And still no receptions by Jerry Rice or Dwight Clark as the backup receivers Mike Wilson and Malone Monroe both get receptions on that drive. Russ Francis, the big one that took him down toward the goal line. And here's the kickoff. Bringing it back out to the 30. And he's going to be stopped at the 30-yard line with 28 seconds left. Dan Marino will come on to attempt to either get some points quick or kneel on the ball. As I believe the Dolphins will get the ball to start in the second half. In Cincinnati, the Bears all over the Bengals as the defending world champions are up 24-7. Meanwhile, in Green Bay, it's the Vikings 35, Green Bay 7 at the half. Marino's in the shotgun. They are going to attempt to try and move the ball. They have two timeouts. Marino looks. He's going to throw. It is tipped and almost intercepted. As Tim McHire steps in front of the pass, intended for one of the Marks brothers. Mark Duper and almost picks it off. At the half, the Houston Oilers lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 10 to three. It's Kansas City 10, Buffalo seven. Marino in the shotgun. He's back to pass, throws it into the flat. Bruce Hardy on the reception is gonna pick up one yard. And the New York Giants still trail the New Orleans Saints 17-10 at the half. Marino averaging seven yards per attempt. That last one went for a yard. It's third and nine now. <clears throat> Reno completes the pass to Mark Duper and a first down to the 45 yard line. Good pass, good for 14 yards. With 16 seconds. 16 seconds to go, and Reno in the shotgun. He's going to throw it toward the sideline. Jim Jensen, are they going to say he got out? Yes, he did. Number 11 gets out of bounds with 11 seconds left at the 49. Picks up four yards. If they can take a shot down the middle, they have two timeouts. Marino's back. The rush is on. It's a screen pass. Lorenzo Hampton, he is going to get down to the 37 with two seconds left. They'll call a timeout. <laughs> oh, from the 37, it would be about a 54-yard attempt. Marino was still on the field. They're going to go for the end zone. We're going to have three receivers, Clayton, Duper, and Jensen. 
Hamptons in the huddle. Bruce Hardy, the tight end. Perhaps. Oh, they are going to go for the field goal. After all that, Flaud Reves comes on to attempt what appears to be a 55-yard field goal attempt. The spot, the kick is down. It is long enough, and it is wide right. Don Strzok had the hold. Flaud Reves the kick. Wide right, and we are at the half with the Miami Dolphins trailing the San Francisco 49ers 7 0, as the Dolphins have now gone six quarters with only one field goal. No touchdowns since week two. Yes. Yeah, Jeff Kemp. Jeff Kemp's 12 of 15, 95 yards. He does have the touchdown pass to Mike Wilson. Reno is 8 of 12. 8 of 12 for 99 yards. Had a couple big passes to Duper. The fumble by Clayton, his only reception, didn't help things. And there is a look at the wide right kick. Both teams are back on the field. Got Don Chulo, the master of coaching adjustments, winner of two Super Bowls. George or Bill Walsh of the 49ers, also winner of two Super Bowls. The last one just happened to be against the Dolphins. There's a look at Don Chulo looking over the play sheet. Ray Wershing to tee it up. Craig Ellis back to return. It's taken at the five. Ellis not waiting for his blocks to set up runs straight into Charles Haley. And you don't run straight into Charles Haley and survive. This young Charles Haley, he's got something special coming, going. He is in his rookie season out of James Madison University, playing special teams and a little bit on defense. We expect big things out of him. 6'5", 252 pounds. Marino in the shotgun. 49ers look like they're going to blitz. Yep, Ronnie Lott blitzes right into the running back, Lorenzo Hampton. He is able to pick up <laughs> three yards, but Locke cuts him off. I got it. That's why they have the cough button on there. Mike. Marino, back to pass. Throws it. Way out of bounds. He was apparently looking for the family of the Joe Robbie up in the stands. Corners Tim McKayer and Don Griffin along with safeties Carlton Williamson and Ronnie Lott. Dan Marino back to pass. Throws it over the middle of Mark Clayton. Clayton trying to make up for his earlier fumble. Gets the first down. And 14 yards on the reception. And there's some swagger out of Marino. It is first and ten. Marino back to pass. All kinds of time. Throws it deep. It is going to be dropped. Almost intercepted. 
Tori Nixon on the coverage. Marino was looking for Jensen, but Nixon had the inside leverage and almost had an interception. Marino with a hand up to Hampton. He's going to be met in the backfield by Keena Turner. And there is no movement out of that as Turner hit him so hard he buried his hands into the ground. Third down and 11 now. Marino in the shotgun. Hardy in motion. Back to pass. Throws it. It is a jump ball, and it is going to be brought down by Mark Clayton on his third reception this afternoon. Picks up the first down. First and ten. Marino's going to give the ball to Hampton. He's going to pick up a couple before being tackled by Fonhorst. Nope, that is Ellison, number 50. Six yards on the carry. Marino in the shotgun. Second and four. Throws it. Oh, right through the hands of Hampton. The running back was not ready for that bullet pass out of Marino, that Elway-esque pass. The quick release out of Marino. And it's third down and four. Marino back. It's a screen pass to Tony Nathan. And Nathan is going to get the first down and out of bounds. Meanwhile, at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, the Eagles all over the Rams, 34-6. to Steve Dills is now in at quarterback for Ron Jaworski, and he throws a touchdown pass to Ron Brown. First and 10 for the Dolphins at the 25 yard line. This is the deepest penetration they've had all afternoon. Moreno taking his time, looking over the 49er defense. They're in a four man front. They're going to hand it off to Hampton. Hampton swinging wide right. Hampton almost got around the tackle of Fan Horse, but trips and falls down. 33 yards on the day for Hampton. In Washington, George Rogers carries it in from seven yards out. Mark Mosley, the veteran, kicks the extra point, and the Redskins lead Seattle 16-7. Marino back to pass on second and five. He's going to throw. It is a jump ball, and it is caught by Mark Clayton in a first and goal at the 10-yard line. Cleveland's Gerald McNeil takes a punt 84 yards for a touchdown as the Browns lead the Lions 14-7. First and goal at the 10. High snap. Marino catches it. <sighs> that looked like a bit of a busted play as the snap was high and Marino was just able to get it off the Ron Davenport. 
He picks up the first down. Second and nine. Moreno coming up under center. He's going to give it to Davenport. Davenport breaks the tackle. Davenport's down to the three-yard line. It'll be third and goal. In Chicago, Thomas Sanders runs it in from one yard out, and the Bears lead the Bengals 38-7. That's in Cincinnati, not Chicago. 38-7 for the world champion Bears. Mike Malarkey catching a seven-yard pass from Tommy Kramer, and the Vikings lead the Packers 42-7. Marino changing the play up. Third and goal from the three. 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Marino's got time. He is going to escape one tackle, and Charles Haley is going to bring him down as Marino was trying to score. Haley gets the sack. It'll be fourth and goal from the three. <clears throat> Actually, it looked like Marino kind of got to the one. They're calling it a sack for no gain, but... I want to look at the spot of that ball. That is the end of the third quarter with San Francisco leading Miami, who's now gone seven quarters without a touchdown, 7 nothing. In the Houston Astrodome, the Pittsburgh Steelers take a 13-10 lead as Gary Anderson hits a 45-yard field goal. Up in Buffalo, Ronnie Harmon catching a 14-yard pass from Jim Kelly, and the Bills are back out in front, 14-10. It appears Dan Marino is going to stay on and go for the fourth down. <coughs> from the shotgun, both Marx brothers out to the right. Marino gives it to Hampton, and Hampton is going to be stopped. Ronnie Lott, Ricky Ellison, the 49ers get the goal line stand, and they will take over. The New York Giants have cut into the New Orleans Saints lead at the end of three. Saints lead the Giants 17-13. Raul, Raul Alegre, just signed last week, joins the Giants and hits a 28-yard field goal. Jeff Kemp giving instructions. There's a look at Jerry Rice to his right. Rice without a reception so far today. The second-year receiver out of Mississippi Valley State. Has become a star so far, but not for Kemp. There's a give to Roger Craig up the middle. Craig's got a huge hole, and Craig's going to get a first down. Out to the 15-yard line. Five rushes for 48 yards for Roger Craig today, and he's letting the defense know about it. First and 10 for the 49ers. From the 15. Since Tom Rathman in motion. There's the handoff to Craig. Craig breaks the tackle. Craig is into the secondary, and he has got himself a first down and 18 yards on the carry. There's the run, Joe Cribs. Cribs into the secondary, and he's got a first down.
First and 10 at the 49. Kemp fakes the handoff this time. He's under pressure. He is going to be hit. He throws as he is hit, and the ball is going to be called incomplete. As number 59, Bob Brzezinski is in to stop, break up the play. Second down and 10 now. 49ers have got to the 49. And there's the handoff to Joe Cribs. Cribs is going to spin and get into Dolphin territory and picks up five on the carry. John Offerdahl. John Offerdahl on the tackle. Third down and four. Big play for the Dolphin defense. Kemp is back to pass. He's got some time. He's looking. He throws. It is overthrown. Incomplete. And fourth down, and the Dolphins will get the ball back. Shula congratulating his defense as they come off. Fourth and four, and Max Runniger will punt. It is a high punt. It'll go out of bounds at the 24. Marino takes over 76 yards away from the end zone. Find the offense. The offense has been missing now for two whole weeks. Had plenty of time this afternoon. Marino back to pass. Here's a quick hit to Jim Jensen. And Jensen is going to pick up eight yards and get out of bounds. That is Jensen's third reception on the afternoon. Hands it off to Hampton. Hampton's going to get the first down. Breaks the tackle. By breaking that tackle, he actually is going to lose yards. Still has the first down. But instead of a seven-yard pickup, it is only four. He reestablished his forward momentum. And he lost yards by doing so. The 49ers swarm to the ball. Marino in the shotgun from the 36. First and 10. He's going to throw. It is caught. It is caught by Bruce Hardy, and they are going to get inside the 40. There's a flag on the field. They're down to the 36, but let's see what the penalty marker is. It is going to be tacked on to the end of the play, and that'll put the Dolphins at the 24 yard line. No, they cannot. <clears throat> Three receivers to the left, tight end on the right, Marino back to pass. Steps up, throws, almost intercepted by Fon Horst, number 55. Jim Fanhorst, second year linebacker out of Minnesota, had good coverage on Mark Duper that time. Mark Duper is not that tall, hard to get up for a jump ball. Marino in the shotgun. 
He is back to pass. Throws over the middle. It's caught by, Nate, by Hampton. Hampton, once again, breaking tackles. Picks the first down up on his third reception. And we got some finals coming in. The Rams scored two times in the second quarter, or in the fourth quarter, but the Eagles are able to win 34 to 20. Steve Dills came in for. Oh, Dills is the Rams quarterback. He came in for Steve Bartkowski and threw three touchdown passes to cut the lead to 34 20, but the Eagles win. Meanwhile, Washington is able to get the win over Seattle 19-14, despite a last-minute touchdown by Steve Largent. Cleveland beats Detroit 24-21. As they score 10 points in the fourth quarter to pull away from the Lions. Marino is in the shotgun. It is first and 10. Hardy sent in motion. Fakes the handoff. Marino's going to run it. And once again, that game plan rushed by Dan Marino. Three rushes, one yard. <clears throat> Second and seven there. Dolphins in the hurry-up offense now. They can pick up a first down. Incomplete. The pass was intended for Davenport. The Chicago Bears destroyed the Cincinnati Bengals 44-7. Thomas Sanders running for 75 yards on one carry to get the final touchdown of the afternoon. Minnesota, 42, Green Bay 7, as it's going to be a clash between the Vikings and Bears in the NFC North, or Central. Well, they always call it the NFC North division, so. The Steelers and Oilers are headed overtime, tied at 16. Tony Zendeja hitting a 23-yard field goal for the Oilers. Marino sending Tony Nathan in motion. Into the end zone. Incomplete. One more thing on that Oiler Steeler game that's in overtime down in Houston. Boy, those fans down there, they sure love their Oilers. Can't imagine them ever leaving that city. This is a huge play as we're in the huddle. 49ers huddling up. The Kansas City Chiefs, Nick Lowry, hits a 46-yard field goal to beat the Bills 20-17. to One more final. The New York Giants, Zeke Mowat catching a four-yard pass from Phil Simms. Come back to defeat the New Orleans Saints 20-17. to And improve to 3-1 and on the year. <clears throat> the Dolphins are going for a field goal. They're going to try and play the odds of getting the ball back with all three timeouts. This is going to be a 26-yard attempt for Reves. The kick is up, and it is good. Miami gets on the board with 136 to go in the game. They now trail 7-3. to three. Now, what's the um, thought process in kicking the field goal instead of going for the touchdown or fourth down. Just looking at Jeff Kemp warming up. It actually appeared to be that there were two Jerry Races on the sideline, and yet neither of them have caught a pass today. Fouad Reves will line up to kick the ball off. Crawford is back deep to return. Crawford on the goal line. He's going to bring it out. He's going to get to the 30. He is over to the 35-yard line. And Jeff Kemp, the unlikely hero, has passed so far for 92 yards and one touchdown. As the 49ers, it appears to be his team going forward. Who knows if Joe Montana will ever be able to play football again.
Kemp's in the shotgun. Here's the give. And he is going to be tackled in the backfield for a loss of one. Big number 99, George Little. Big Little. Unblocked. The Dolphins use their first time out. With 1.27 to go, it is second and 11. Looking in the huddle, it appears center Fred Quinlan is trying to calm the 49ers down. Quinlan, the eighth-year center out of Oregon, becoming the de facto leader with Montana out of the lineup and possibly out of football. Kemp is going to hand it off to Joe Cribs, and Cribs is going to be yanked down and tackled for a loss or, nope, you gain one, and Miami calls a timeout. One timeout remaining in his third and ten. Calling the play in the huddle. Still no receptions for Jerry Rice. Kemp gives a look over to Russ Francis as if to tell him to get open. It is third and ten. They are going to run the ball. There's the handoff to Roger Craig, and he is going to be tackled. And Dolphins will spend their final time out. So, Miami will not have Miami will not have any timeouts left as Max Runniger, the seventh year punter out of South Carolina, will come on to attempt to put the Dolphins deep into their own territory. This match of Dolphins there in the huddle. Looking at Dan Reno has got a warming up now. There's the punt. <coughs> the punt sails into the end zone. And it'll be first and ten from Reno at the 20. Reno 15 to 25, 193 yards on the afternoon. From the shotgun. Marino fakes the handoff. Throws it deep. Over the middle. Almost intercepted but dropped. Don Griffin went up for the interception. Could not come down with it. And it will be a second down and ten for the Dolphins. Looking ahead to the afternoon games. The San Diego Chargers are in Los Angeles to take on the Raiders. It's Atlanta at Tampa Bay, New England at Denver, and New York Jets at Indianapolis Colts. And tomorrow night, Monday night football, the Dallas Cowboys at the St. Louis Cardinals. Marino's in the shotgun. He's back to pass. Throws over the middle to Jensen. Jensen, nope. That is Bruce Hardy. He's going to pick up the first down. The Dolphins are going to run. They have no timeouts. And Marino spikes the ball. You know, I've always wondered why nobody doesn't ever fake the spike. It'd be something that you might see out of a Dan Marino someday. Yes. There's a look at Ronnie Lott. 
<clears throat> Heading deep. Marino in the shotgun. Back to pass. Throws. They're going to give him that over the middle stuff. Hampton picks up the first down. Lorenzo Hampton. The Dolphins back to the line of scrimmage. Marino spikes the ball. So it'll be second down and 10 from the 42. 58 yards away. They need a touchdown. They are down by four. Seven to three. The 49ers are going to give them that over the middle stuff. But if you keep doing that, they're burning 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds per play. They're not going to have any more of those left. Marino takes the handoff. Throws it. Over the middle. This time it's caught for a longer game. It is caught from by Mark Duper. 30 seconds left. He's down to the 25. The Dolphins have got to hurry. Marino huffing it. Trying to get the Dolphins down to line up. 21 seconds and Marino spikes the ball. Two hundred and forty eight yards passing for Dan Marino and the Dolphins. A couple fresh receivers in that huddle. I saw number eighty nine, Nat Moore, the veteran, the twelfth year man. Had a Tennessee Martin in the huddle. Marino back to pass. Throws it. It is complete to Bruce Hardy. But he's tackled inbounds at the 22 with 13 and counting. Marino gets the Dolphins up the line of scrimmage. 10, 9, 8, 7. Marino spikes the ball with 6 seconds to go at the 22-yard line. It is 4th and 7. There is nothing left now. They have to get the ball into the end zone. Five receivers. Three to the right. One in the backfield. One out left. Marino back to pass. He's looking to the end zone. It is a jump ball. It is incomplete. And there's one second on the clock. The Dolphins are going to get one more chance. It was kind of like a mini Hail Mary there. Well, that was fourth down. Yeah, you're right. And that is why we have John M. on color commentary. Jeff Kemp gets the win in his third start. That's he's now two and one, and the 49ers will get to three and one. The Dolphins will drop to one and three, and for the defending AFC East champions, it's going to be an uphill battle from here for the Dolphins. Yes, but you got to wonder, where do the Dolphins go from here? Their offense now in two straight games has been held to three points. Very unlike the Dolphins. Jeff Kemp takes the kneel, and that is it. As the San Francisco 49ers come to South Beach, hold on, and win 9-3, or 7-3. That 9-3 was last week's score against the Jets. 9-3 over the Miami Dolphins. Folks, thanks for joining us from here at the Orange Bowl in Miami as the Miami Dolphins fall to the 49ers 7-3. And real quick as we go over the highlights, come back to present day. If you are interested in seeing history changed, the only history that was changed here is a 31-16 game was brought to a 7-3. And for the second straight week, Miami has been voted the game of the week and their offense has not been anywhere seen. Uh, I tried, attempted to change the sliders to get a more exciting game. We did get a touchdown this week, I can say that. Starting tomorrow morning, voting will go up to vote for the game of the week for week 5, 1986. They are Washington at New Orleans, Los Angeles Raiders at Kansas City, Miami at New England, Cleveland at Pittsburgh, Cincinnati at Green Bay, Minnesota at Chicago, Houston at Detroit, Philadelphia at Atlanta, New York Giants at St. Louis, Indianapolis at San Francisco, Buffalo at the New York Jets, Tampa Bay at the Los Angeles Rams, Dallas at Denver and the Monday Nighter, San Diego at Seattle. Go online, see what the original scores were. How do you want, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> 
How do you want history to change? You can comment on this video. Leave a like, hit subscribe. Also, go over and visit John M's video or channel. You can find his videos in the 1960 and 1986-91. Um, playlists. Just scroll down on my channel to playlists and you can see those. And we thank you for joining us. John, it was a pleasure working with you this week. Until next time, we'll see you later.